Oh, hello. Uh, <laughs> so, it's the start of another beautiful day here in California. Uh, a little bit rainy. So, today my focus primarily is going to be continuing working on the search API uh, and also maybe catching up on some video editing because, uh, yeah, we have this like team video that I've been meaning to publish for a while as well as like just, you know, some personal videos uh, that would be nice to get processed as well. Um, but before I get into any of that, uh, I, I like to start every single day with at least a brief five minute meditation, longer if I feel like it, and uh, at least, you know, a short little bit of exercise and a walk. Uh, I really feel that just kind of recentering yourself and becoming clear minded, energized, uh, experiencing a little bit of the, you know, outside reality going to the park. Uh, this is the kind of thing that really helps me to stay consistent and dedicated to uh, working and everything else in my life. It's kind of just like a, a multiplier that improves everything across the board. Um, so yeah, uh, here's my routine. I'm just going to go through it really, really briefly, but yeah, maybe it's curious too. Hey, okay, so uh, I've taken some time to go ahead and just like work my way through an implementation of the user interface aspect of the flower search. Uh, yeah, and I can't wait to show you what I've got here. So uh, I had to do a fair bit of work to update our little like drop down component to be much better. Uh, and then I put it to use with some like automatic cool stuff with Proto. All right, so yeah, here, here let me uh, start off by showing. Um, so this is the production site, right? And uh, we have this like little drop down here that I made a, a while back. Um, <clears throat> but it's like, you know, not the best drop down in the world. You can see like when you hover, it's not super bright, you know, like which selection is made. And then uh, if you like click over here, if you like click off of it, it doesn't close automatically. You can even click on like unusual and it still doesn't close. Um, so, you know, it definitely could use some improvement. Uh, so I did that. Uh, so here, let's check out, uh, let's check out what we got. Yeah, okay, here we go. So this is, uh, this is localhost. So this is what I'm, I'm working on currently. Uh, and you can see here, this drop down now it has kind of like nice hover states and if you click off it, it actually closes and this little arrow uh, flips up and down now. Yeah, got all those little flippy arrows. All right, so then I took this component that I had, you know, it's, uh, it's all, the site is all made in React, so all of the individual uh, like widgets and pieces can be reused very easily. Uh, so on the account page now I have uh, these little little filter bits here. Uh, and again, this is just the user interface. Uh, in the next episode, we're gonna actually like wire them together and get this sort of like working and then start polishing it off. Um, but yeah, here it is. So like under rarity, you might have, again, any rarity, because you don't care, or common, unusual, rare, epic, legendary. Land type could be planted, not planted, or you don't care. And then you can sort by age, or you can sort by, you know, rarity, growth speed, harvest size. Those are the options that are put in, ascending or descending. Yeah, so, I mean, this is basically it. But you can see a lot of things are already working nicely. We've got these, like, little flipping arrows. All of these things automatically change. They know what their selections are. And I'm ready to, like, make the query to the, the back-end service. 
Um, yeah, and you can see they're also like closing automatically. They've got the nice kind of hover states. Um, it's feeling good. It's feeling kind of like polished and uh, and snappy. So um, yeah, let's dive in. Let me show you a little bit of like how how this actually was done. Um, overall, it's not too challenging, but all those like little features that I'm talking about in terms of yeah things flipping, in terms of like the clicking off of it to close it. Uh, the highlight selections, the integrations uh, between each other, uh, all that, of course, you know, somebody has to implement, and that somebody is me in this case. Um, so we can see here some interesting uh, stuff. Uh, let's start with the the drop down uh, component. So uh, th this is how I currently write React components. It seems like React is always changing, so I you know always have to kind of stay on top of it. Uh, but, you know, very briefly, the idea with a React is that you create components and you do this in kind of an object-oriented sort of way. Uh, components have what's called life cycle. So, for example, when a component mounts, it might do something like add a listener for events, or when it unmounts, it might remove that listener. Um, and then at the end of a, uh, um, a React component, typically, you put the actual HTML. So this is the, the HTML that's produced. Uh, and of course, the HTML that's produced is based on the, the state. So in React, you, know, you have like a model that shows the, um, yeah, kind of the underlying data of the component. And as the model changes, then the entire page automatically re-renders and changes all the little bits of HTML. Uh, and it's uh, stays in sync. So yeah, uh, some things that we can see here. So let's start at the bottom here with the, the HTML. Uh, so we have a, a drop down div, main div. Uh, it might have some classes and the classes can change if it's um, currently open or closed. Uh, then we have an on click handler. So when the, the label is clicked, uh, it shows the dropdown, so it changes the state. This is a, a very basic, clear example of how state works. You know, you, you clicked something on HTML, it caught that click, it modified the state, which then causes the uh, render method to get called again, and React changes what, what things look like. Okay, great. So um, that's kind of the rough idea there, and again, you, you have to kind of think about all of the different um, Things that you have to take care of, like like when uh, somebody clicks off of the drop down, it should close. Uh, so in this case, we made a listener for mouse down uh, on the entire page, and then when the mouse click is outside uh, of the the current element that where we're concerned about, like basically ourselves, our drop down. When when the click is outside of the drop down, then we change the state to not visible. So, again, basically the way this is done is we get the current reference to the um, drop-down div, and then if it contains the event target, so the target of the click, uh, then we change the state. And that's, you know, reasonably straightforward, but I know I'm also kind of like kind of skipping through here. Um, yeah, and then so the other part of what I had to do here was make a... Uh, um, another component that holds this filter bar and can affect uh, other parts of the page when things change. Uh, so let's take a look at that. So here's the card filters uh, object, or uh, sorry, component that I've created in React. Um, let's also open the flower serve, uh, flower db service protobuf again. So this is our definition that we've been working on uh, of the flower search API that we saw in the first episode. Uh, so the card filters, its job in many ways is to just literally read this protobuf definition and offer the same options. Because, you know, like when you're, when you're looking at this, um, like the, these rarity options are exactly the same ones that you see on the right hand side under flower query. So see it says rarity tier. 
and under rare to tier you have any rarity common usual rare epic legendary then under uh, land affinity you have any land soil stone sand lava water etc under planted you have any planted planted or not planted under uh, sort by you have age rarity growth speed harvest size and under sort order you have ascending descending so uh, basically the the way that I implemented this is by simply uh, reading the protobuf and formatting it so uh, the component here is kind of what you'd expect right you, you have three drop downs on the left side and then you have three drop downs on the right side uh, I achieve all of my layout these days using Flexbox, uh, which makes it very easy to do this kind of layout where you have two things and they're kind of separated by a gap between each other. Um, of course, uh, part of what also we had to do is make sure that this works well in mobile. You can see how these things reorganize. They uh, become centered and they start taking up two rows instead of a single row. But the mechanics are the same, and you can sort of click around and choose these options. Uh, but yeah, uh, always, always remember mobile. Yeah, I, I think this is looking great, and uh, pretty soon here we'll be able to wire that up to the backend API that we've been working on, um, and then also add this to the flower picker. So when you're in game choosing which flower you want to plant, uh, I can add it there as well and uh, we'll get collection filtering. And then as a bonus, what I can also do is, uh, currently the way that flower cards are loaded is it asks Ethereum for their data and then it loads them directly uh, using Web3 straight from the Ethereum network. Uh, however, that, that's like a little bit slow. Um, so what we can do instead is have uh, people's accounts instead download data directly from uh, our database potentially and I think that might actually speed it up a lot while also using some of our like caching infrastructure so it, it could be the experience that you like go to your account page and it's just loaded you know instantly um, that, that's the dream all right well I'll cut it here without going on for way too long you know uh, but yeah I'll see you in the next episode and it'll be cool to get this project uh, out the door get everybody using it Yeah, okay. Taking care of things around here. Mm -mm -mm. <sighs> Be nice to eat some food.